I was a huge fan of Halloween Horror Nights. Sadly, I say was, because something happened there that I don't think I'll ever truly be able to get past. I still remember it like it was yesterday. Anyone I've tried to describe it to since then has been skeptical about it, but my story still remains the same. I discovered a haunted experience at the event that wasn't supposed to be there, and I saw something I shouldn't have seen. If you're a big Halloween Horror Nights fan, you probably know about the yearly icons. Jack the Clown, Chance, the director, just to name a few. Well, that year was one of the years where they brought them all back, and you could see them inside the park all at once. I had been following the event for several years, so this prospect was pretty exciting to me in general. I didn't have a lot of friends back then, and I had even fewer who were interested in going to that event with me. So I ended up getting a ticket and going on my own. I went on opening night, and it was great because the park was dead, which really adds to the creepiness of it, especially if you're alone. Walking down one of the foggy streets in the Hollywood-themed area, I could hear the familiar echo from the chainsaw guys chasing after people in the distance. I was never a huge fan of those guys. I guess it just hurts my ears, and it's more of a surprise scare than an actual one for me. So I went to the left to walk along the lake, which seemed even more dead. That was when I noticed a scare actor in the abandoned alleyway that goes into the New York area. It was The Usher, which was the 2009 Horror Nights icon based on a zombie movie theater attendant. He stared at me silently, then briefly looked around. There were no people in sight, just fog and empty streets. Then he grinned and slowly signaled for me to approach, pointing at the doorway beside him. This was the kind of eerie experience I would always get excited about. It's the kind of scare where it doesn't aim to surprise or shock you, but the atmosphere is so creepy that just imagining the possibilities makes you frighten yourself. I was surprised that I was lucky enough to have the place to myself. Like I said, I'm a pretty big fan, and if this was indeed some kind of Halloween Horror Nights Easter egg experience, let's just say I wanted all the scares for myself. So I entered the alleyway, and the usher guided me to these little steps leading to an entrance. Above it, a sign reading The Cellar hung haphazardly. I cautiously went down the steps and through an open door, leading to a long, dark corridor. Up ahead, I saw a high school couple giggle and turn the corner, which eased the tension a little. This was still the creepiest entrance to a Horror Nights house I had experienced, though. Walking up and turning the corner, I entered a strange medieval living room type setup with a huge area rug and wooden walls. There was this long table in the corner with a few people sitting around it dressed in high-end old-fashioned attire. They stayed so still I couldn't tell if they were even real or not. The weirdest part of the whole thing was the entire room was silent. No music or spooky sound effects or anything. You have no idea how deafeningly loud silence can actually feel in an awkward situation like that. Then out of nowhere, this grandfather clock rang out, and a woman at the table with this crazy tall hair shrieked a terrifying guttural scream. None of the other people at the table reacted, but the woman just kept screaming and screaming, which eventually got really uncomfortable. There not being anyone behind me, I didn't know if I was supposed to keep going or watch, but at that point, I was kind of ready to move on. That was when the icon called the caretaker, this tall man with a pair of huge gardening shears and a top hat, popped out from a room behind her and cut open the back of her neck. Blood spewed across the room as the woman's face fell into a soup bowl in front of her. It was truly disturbing and way more intense than any of the stuff I'd ever seen in Horror Nights. He then lifted up the body and tossed it into the room he had come in from, then turned towards me. He smiled as he began repeatedly clamping his shears in my direction. Starting to get legitimately creeped out, I headed towards the exit of the room. In the shadows, I passed another Horror Nights icon, the director, who filmed me as he <laughs> laughed hysterically. I don't normally get freaked out by haunted houses, but I could not explain how they had done that effect, and I'll admit I was starting to question my courage. 
scrambling through several emptier rooms without really paying much attention. I eventually slowed down as I approached a torture chamber. The chamber was silent like the first room, except I could hear the clinking of chains hanging from the ceiling above. I began to notice a light whimper coming from somewhere in the darkness further up in the room. I turned the corner and saw two people gagged and up on racks. As I got closer, I recognized they were both wearing green shirts, like the high school couple who had come into the attraction before me. They were pretty out of it, but when they opened their eyes and realized I was there, they both started going nuts, screaming and shaking, trying to get loose. At that moment, I was pretty sure this wasn't a game anymore. I ran up to them and tried to help, but they were both cuffed to the device, and we didn't have a key. Suddenly, a knife flew past my head and hit the wall in front of me. I turned around and saw the icon, Chance, a psychotic female clown, and the caretaker walking towards me as the director filmed them from behind. I backed up and felt the hands of the high schoolers clenching at my arms. They had released themselves from the rack and were laughing hysterically at me. I screamed, trying to get away as the caretaker started clamping wildly in my direction with the gardening shears. I finally slipped away and raced towards the next room as fast as I could, entering a mirror maze type area. I wasn't running for long before I smacked into the glass giving myself a bloody nose. Slowing my pace to a brisk walk, I held my hands out continuing to search desperately for an exit. The caretaker popped around the corner clamping his shears, seeming to clip off a piece of my hair. Finally, I saw an exit up ahead, and as soon as I was clear of the mirrors, I made a break for it. I entered a room with a large picture of a kill being made in the park by Jack the Clown, the terrifying orange-haired clown icon from several different years. The photo was during one of the theme park shows and looked suspiciously real. As I observed the rest of the room, I noticed many other pictures of kills made by the various park icons all of them strangely realistic as well. At the end of the room sat an old lady, the storyteller. She had a large book in front of her. Looking up at me with cold, dead eyes, she said, Remember the moral of the story, dear. One man's treasure is another man's pain. Chance and the caretaker dove in, slashing and slicing at me. Turning a corner and going down the next hallway, I found the walls covered with photos of guests who had visited the park in the past, going all the way back to what looked like the 90s. Then the very last photo at the end of the hall was one of me. Finally, making my way out of the building, I found myself in a different fog-filled alleyway in the park. I froze in horror as Jack the Clown slowly stepped around the corner, twirling a cane. He started walking towards me, but then suddenly stopped, then vanished into the fog behind him as a crowd of people walked by. I figured that was my chance to escape and took off towards the exit of the park, which turned out to be a good decision. Luckily, I did make it out that night, and the more I think about it, the more I realize they never did technically do anything wrong to me. They still maintained their no-touch rule, never physically harmed me, and if the murder and the kidnapping was fake, well, then it was just an extremely intense house. I did inform Park Security about it, but due to the nature of the event, they barely took it seriously. They told me they'd look into it, but I suppose it's a pretty unbelievable story. I haven't ever been able to verify another person going through that house either, so maybe I just imagined the whole thing, although I seriously doubt that. I still wonder to this day, though, if the photos of those other guests in that hallway were as lucky as I was. I know these are likely things I will never find out. However, if you ever do go to the event and come across an attraction connected to that alleyway, please let me know. I need to find out more about what really happened that night, if I ever have any hope of moving past it. Hey, it's Mr. Freaky. I know there's a lot of Halloween Horror Nights fans out there, so what's been your favorite attraction at the event? Leave it in the comments and let's discuss. Also, as always, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more theme park related horror stories, as well as join the Discord to get involved with the community. Have a horrific evening, everyone, and remember to stay spooky, my friends.